Hello everyone. Hope you guys are doing great as usual. This is lecture number four in Statistic for All series. And today our topic is frequency distribution. And this is Kaukar Manzoor, teacher, trainer, and life coach. Okay, hope you guys are enjoying my lectures. Uh, and if you have any question confusion, so you can ask, right? Okay, so let's begin. What is frequency distribution? Now, frequency distribution is basically a tabular summary of data showing the frequency means the numbers of item of in each of the several non overlapping classes now what does it mean it means that we when we collect the data so we have the data in jumbled form right and then we classify it and we put it into the table and against the certain variables we have certain numbers so that is called as frequency distribution the reason behind is we want to get meaning out of the data right so when we collect the data it's mixed form so how to get uh, some meaningful result out of that data so we make the frequency frequency distribution now how it comes right take this example for example uh, there's a, a in in an hotel or in or anything right and you stay there and uh, we uh, asked from at least 20 guests how would you rate their accommodations right and we give them the four uh, or five categories like for example you rate them excellent above average average or below average or poor so we assign ask them to rate that uh, rate the accommodations of that in marada in uh, in five categories right so first let's suppose guests say it was below average the second guest says um, it was above average the third also says above average the fourth one say it was average the fifth one said it was above average and so on and so forth right now if you see this data it it does not give us any meaning right it's average below average poor so we cannot get some meaning out of it that whether the uh, the accommodation was good bad or what right so what we do we convert them into a table into a tabular form that is called as frequency distribution so here we have ratings we have poor, below average, average, above average, and excellent, right? So these were the five rating. So how many of the people, how many of the guests said the accommodation was poor? So it is two. From where we get this number two? Here you can see all of these results, we see only two poors, this one and this one, right? So we have poor. So I mean there are, we have, there are only two poors, means, means only two guests said the accommodation was poor okay next below average three responses so you see one below average then we have uh, second one second one second one second one uh, this one below average and this is the third so three guests said below average similarly you see all these things and then you collect them so when you put all the data in this table form now it is very simple and easy to understand that majority of the people said that the accommodation was above average. We get nine. Only one said is excellent. Only two said is poor. So majority is between average and above average. So means overall we can say Marada in accommodation is to some extent it is above average or average. It's neither an excellent nor very much poor because nine plus five means around 40, 14 out of uh, 20 people are around they, their response was average and above average right so this means now we can get some meaning out of the data another concept is relative frequency distribution now what is relative frequency distribution relative frequency distribution means that we compare one class with the entire data so it's a class is the fraction or the proportion of the total number of data items belongs to that class and when you put into the table so it will be called as relative frequency distribution so that is tabular summary will be called as distribution now what does it mean look at the example here you will uh, okay we'll come towards it a uh, little later also understand the concept of percent frequency when we take uh, percentage of that relative frequency means we multiply it by 100 so we'll get the frequency percent frequency and when you multiply uh, when you take put and we write it into the tabular summary that is simply called as person frequency distribution now let's take this example you will easily understand right if you remember we little earlier we said that uh, the we take the same data of maradine accommodation and we had 
five ratings poor below average average above average and excellent so two people said poor three said below average five said average and nine were of the view that the accommodation was above average now this was the frequency now what is relative frequency relative frequency means what is the portion of those people in the entire data that said poor so portion here means 2 divided by 20 that gives us 0 0.10 0 0.10 when it's multiplied by 100 it gives us 10 it means 10 percent people says that the accommodation was poor so see 2 is not giving us any sense but here we can say uh, that 10 percent people so out of the entire population here we had 20 people if it was 200 50 hundred thousand so 10 percent now gives us a sense that 10 percent people are of the view that the accommodation is poor similarly 3 divided by 20 gives us 0.15 that is relative frequency when you multiply it by 500 we get 15 so now we can say 15 percent people says it was above average similarly you can calculate all so this sum must be equivalent to 100 because it is the percentage and this must be this the sum of this must be one because we are taking relative frequency so means we are taking proportion of the one complete whole so this is the concept of relative frequency and percent frequency now when what if we want to make the groups of this frequency distribution here you, we had only one category or one class right uh, like poor and we had the frequency what do we give the range from let from how many people are from 10 to 15 how many people say this to 15 to 20 like when we have groups so how to make the groups right okay so before going to construct a <coughs> group frequency distribution you must take care of few things that uh, do not make less than five classes or more than 20 classes because it will not go look good and why we have five classes when the data is very small so you may take at least five classes that at least it should represent a table and when you have too much data large large data so maximum you can have 20 classes right so smaller data set usually requires fewer classes larger data set requires more class. so but the statistician says that you should not make more than 20 classes because it will again uh, will be very laborious the second thing that you need to need to take into account that uh, how much class worth should be there so largest data value minus smallest data value divided by number of classes so means you can decide classes i we said we can have 5 to 20 classes 7 8 10 9 whatever so here we can do it let's take this example now we have a uh, manager of hudson auto would like to get a better picture of the distribution of the cost for engine tune-up parts a sample of 50 customer invoices has been taken and the cost of parts rounded to the nearest dollar and listed below so this is the sorry this is the cost of 50 customer invoices see one two three four five and these are ten so fifty so different people have given their own opinion means uh, different people customers have their own cost so all these costs are mentioned so again it is jumbled so we cannot figure it out that what does it mean right you can see these two red circle circles i will explain later later that what does it mean right okay so now we have this data so here we make the classes if you remember the formula approximate maximum value minus minimum value divided by number of classes so here we are going to take six classes as i told you when data is small so you can take five classes when data is large you can take up to 50, 20 classes so it was <coughs> a small data so we just take six classes right now 109 is the maximum value here you can see 109 uh, where is 109 109 here yeah, this is 109 right so there's this is the maximum value here <coughs> What is the minimum value that is 52 right so 109 minus 52 divided by 6 that gives us 9.5 so approximately that is 10 so we take the class differences class width this is called as class width 10 like 52 59 that makes 10 now how many people or how many customer invoices uh, cost comes between 50 to 59 so here we go back and we so we see how many of them or their the customer invoices cost was showing 50 to 
59 so you see there is no 50 to 59 this is all more than 59 all more than 59 all more than 59 here 57 that comes between 50 and 59 so one value okay then again it's greater than 59 then again it's greater than 59 here 50 to 59 so between 50 and 59 this is the second value okay then here all the values are greater than 59 all the values are greater than 59 greater 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 so I mean there are only two values which comes between 50 and 59 so here we write 2 similarly now you better work on it with find 60 to 69 so how many values are between 60 and 69 just circle it and then write it here so you'll find that there are 13 values between 60 and 69 Similarly, between 70 and 79, there are 16 values and so on and so forth. So if you sum up, all these are 50. Because How 50? Because we had 50 customer invoices. So this is how you can construct the frequency distribution table. Right? Similarly, now you can find the relative frequency. So it is very simple. How to find it? 2 divided by 50. That gives us 0 0.04. Right? Similarly, 13 divided by 50, that gives us 0.26. So in this way, you will calculate all the values. You will get sum is 1. And when you multiply it with 100, we get percent frequency. So 0 0.04 multiplied by 100, 4. 0 0.26 multiplied by 100, 26. Right? And this way, you will get all these things. So this is the way you construct the frequency distribution that is called a grouped frequency distribution so we can make the class intervals you can see the class width how to calculate it maximum value minus minimum value divided by number of classes so i hope the concept is clear now so what is the benefit of it you see now when you find the percentage as i explained earlier this gives us the meaning some sense of the data so you see now we can conclude that only 4% people say their customer their cost is between 50 and 59 while 26% uh, customers cost is between 60 and 69 and 32% customers cost is 70 and 79 right so the greatest percentage is 32 or almost one third of the part of the cost are in 70 and 79 so now manager can make the decisions that majority of the customers cost lie between 70 and 79 and similarly so forth and so on so forth so this is how you can make the frequency distribution i hope you got the concept so take care stabilize see you with in the next class with a newer concept right